Well, this sucks. I was looking for an urn, uh, just an extra urn, because we have a lot of them, f for making like a, a, a bottle tumbler machine to polish bottles. So I looked in the back of my mom's tracker that we don't drive, and water damage. There's water over there, water in there. This kind of become like a little storage unit where we store some random junk. Luckily, my edaphones haven't gotten too wet. Or really wet at all, actually. Got the other one over here. Maybe I'll have to restore them sometime. Even as a pin, so you can write down bits for when it, what you're talking about. Or about the recording. I got these when I was like, oh, probably 14 or so. Edison Clonawatt. Clonawatt? Conowatt. Edison. Oh, Edison Econowatt. Okay, Edison Econowatt. It's a nice motor nonetheless. And has a neat governor on the edges there. Made about 1917 or so. On this one, we, it has a spool still on it. Although this one's pretty, pretty ruined. It doesn't have any tracks left on it. I had the chance to buy the recording unit with these for $20, but I didn't because, well, when I was that young, $20 was a lot. That was four weeks of allowance. Now I wish I would have gotten that. It was a big stand-up unit, about this tall, about that wide. It would cut my its own place, but I can build a thing to cut them. If not, I think these ones are made so they can cut them. Don't know. I think with this model is missing a, a lot more parts and it's a lot more falling apart. I think I'll rip the motor off this, which is it's just two bolts. It's meant to come apart, and I can test that separately. Actually, that'd probably be a good idea to just to dis disassemble both of them. Now, how these actually work is they have these records called Ambrol records. They're cylinders with the sound saved in a, in a groove, in a circular helical motion, or uh, yeah, circular spiral around the cylinder and so you put it on there then you would move your thing over and set it on there and it would rotate it meanwhile it's geared so that this sc screw right here rotates also and that moves it over and these are dic dictaphones so I believe that by like fl flipping the knob that used to be here that would make it to where this would turn into a speakerphone or a microphone so you could you could also cut and record what you were making because it was for dictation. So for the glass polishing tumbler project, I'm going to see about using this old rock tumbler my mom had as a kid. It's been sitting outside for, for several years now, but it still does turn. So let's plug it in and see if it blows up or if it actually works. I grease these fittings. Let's see how that does. Much better. I think I'm going to use this container to house the, the bottle and all the BBs. And, of course, I put, like, duct tape around it and get a better container some other day. But in order for that to fit, I'm going to cut out this part.
So I must say I'm pretty happy with how my computer system is set up currently. I have my main monitor, I have my secondary monitor which can easily be switched over to play the game console, which right now happens to be Nintendo 64, but it can be any game console. I'm running off my Asus CM6850 with my Optiplex 320 as my backup, and that is, that's the only computer I'd want to have as a backup. That thing is so reliable. But the issue that I'm running into is hard drive space. I have th three terabytes of data space, and that's still not enough room for my stuff. I have it about, n all my hard drives are about 95% uh, full. Because I have about, I'd say, four different things that, uh, different categories of things I save. One, creative stuff, such as like images I make, um, 3D models I make, project folders, uh, rendered videos, stuff like that. Then I have my my YouTube videos, which I I could count that as creative, but my YouTube videos. The raw footage, I have about, I think, 500 or 600 gigabytes of raw footage already. And last year I filmed 300 gigabytes of footage for my YouTube channel. So that can be in its own little category. Three, I have downloaded like movies and whatnot for entertainment, like Mythbusters and Pokemon and Back to the Future and whatnot. And four, I have my cascaded backup. Now what I mean by cascaded backup is... I always copy all the data from from my from another computer onto my biggest computer, and so I have every computer. I, on this computer, I still have information. I have I still have pictures I drew in in photo in, in MS Paint in like 2002 when I was like eight years old, so or nine years old. So I have I like to keep all of my data that I've ever created. And one issue that I've that I run into is I, I have duplicates of things. Like for instance, whenever I first got an operating system on, uh, finally on this laptop, I I copied 50 gigabytes of information from here onto there so I could have all the data so I could do stuff with it cuz if you have a laptop without any information on it, you can't really do much. But but I just copied all my 3D models and whatnot so and songs and whatnot so I could always do something on this laptop. Well, then I started changing it so now I save this, se uh, this uh, well, the now 70 gigabytes from this computer onto the uh, computer. And then I had this one, which is unique enough for me to save it in and of itself on this computer. But really only about five or six gigabytes was different with this computer. So it wasn't, I mean, so I'm saving a lot of duplicates. So I'm going to have to go through and organize all my stuff. But still, that's not going to help me because I'm running out of space fast. So... I went out and bought myself another three terabyte drive, or not, not not another three terabyte. My first three terabyte, but another three terabytes of memory. This is my first three terabyte drive. It's huge. Now I bought this at Walmart for about one hundred twenty dollars, which is amazing. I can't believe that you can get three terabytes for one hundred twenty dollars, but it's inevitable that that would happen, and it's inevitable that you can get this for even cheaper, or I can't get it at all because it's too small. someday. So they had Seagate, Western Digital, and Toshiba, all for the exact same price. I picked Seagate because, well, I have some hard drives from like 1987 by Seagate that still work. I know how they used to make it isn't, I, I, just because they used to make them very good doesn't mean that their, their new ones are any good. But I've had a lot of luck with their brand. Now, that being said though, my other one terabyte drives are Toshiba, so they do work okay. Um, I'm, I've never had any issues with them, so Toshiba might have been, might have been okay, but I don't know for sure if I'd trust three terabytes w to them. And as for Western Digital, I've had a, I've had several of their drives go out on me. Like this was the original one that came with my CM6850, and it went out about a year after I bought it, and it was a pain in the butt to get the data off of it. That's uh, th that's one reason why a lot of this a lot of the data on my computer is just all over the place is because. Some, sometimes it's difficult to get it off the original computer, so you're just happy just to get it on the hard drives, and then you kind of forget about it, and then you learn you learn how to access it quickly, even though it's an inefficient way to access it. And the other hard drive that I've had that failed was my 20 megabyte hard drive from my original IBM PC XT, but I think I can revive that just with a low-level format, so it's not all that bad. It's just an older hard drive, but still, Western Digital, I don't know. 
I wouldn't say they're really bad. They are a big brand name, but hmm. I think I think Seagate was a better choice. But we'll find out. And it's detected. Now the only thing is though, I can't just add this to it and have six terabytes because oh, my it would just the mess would continue. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to clean this up. And I think I have figured out a way. And also, I figured out a way to kill two birds with one stone. I fear the oncoming collapse of computers because there is a very good chance that electromagnetic ray uh, uh, waves could destroy computers. Like, for instance, if we had a large solar flare like we did in the 1850s, that would wipe out probably all my computers and all of my data. I mean, a lot of the data on my hard drives are like pictures I've taken when I was like 10. So I don't want to lose that stuff. So I think what I can do is I can use this as an indirect backup where I only really access it maybe once a month or so just to copy over necessary things. And I keep that in a homemade... Um, Faraday cage, or a big, um, well, actually what it'd be is a really big safe that my great-grandparents gave me, but I think that would be a, a really nice way to keep it very secure. So here's the remnants of a chunk of magnesium that I just burned. I already uploaded the video of that. But I have a lot more magnesium to burn in experiments or to use for stuff. These are just printing plates. They're magnesium on the bottom and with an aluminium sheet on the top. So it's not like I burned up all my magnesium. But now I'm, I'm really wanting to eat one of these white specks of magnesium oxide. Let's see what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. Ah, that doesn't taste too good. <coughs> it's pretty dry. Very dry. Wow. So in the last random bits, I asked you what this was. Some of you said like a, a horn or a siren funnel or a hopper or a couple random guesses, but a lot of you said a television screen. Well, actually, you are correct. This is from a 1940s or 1950s television CRT tube. You can see on this side, there, there was glass that was mounted to this that was for the electron beam gun. And then there was another layer of glass in the front that was connected in here with a either a high strength glue or it was just pressed into here but this was this was back whenever it was too expensive to produce an actual full-sized glass CRT bigger than like nine inches so in order to get like a 16 inch screen you had to use a metal shell and then put the two glass endings on each side I believe this would be 1950s maybe 1960s I don't know if it was color or black and white and I can't find much information about it on the internet I've only seen like one or two metal I would say composite CRT tubes and so this is mostly my speculation but it's pretty cool it's actually kind of funny I found this on my uncle's farm they were using it in the campfire which is kind of a shame I wish I had the in entire television the next thing I'm gonna have you guess this time is 
these little bits and bobs. But let's give you a closer up look so you can see actually what we're talking about. So for these items, I'll give you two hints to help you guess what they are. First hint, they have to be broken. Second hint, they keep something secure. Tell me in the comment section below what you think they are. See ya!